Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dash Trader Newsroom from Las Vegas as we're here at the Traders for a Cause event in Las Vegas. So the Fed is finally cutting rates, but the is the economy free and clear? We've been talking about, you know, the soft landing, potential recession. Needless to say, we've been talking about this for a while. We'll try to get some insights on it. My name is Michael DeJoya, Director of Educational Services here at Dash Trader, joined by my co-host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter from NASDAQ. Jill, how are you? Good. Doing well, Mike. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. So, I mean, this is just a, a general update on the wall of worry as we go into earnings season. And, um, you know, inflation is is uh, still a big concern. The Fed did come out and said, you know, they pretty much telegraphed that they were going to try to cut two more full points, you know, which is pretty substantial. The question is, is whether or not they'll actually be able to do that, considering the inflation situation. And uh, then, you know, we still see, you know, going into earnings season, the banks tend to report first. And we just had this settlement by TD Bank which, you know, settled for a $3 billion money laundering case. So what are your thoughts overall on whether the Fed's going to be able to do what they say they're going to do, um, inflation, and of course, just the general uh, status of the big banks going into this earnings season? Yeah, well, it's interesting. JP Morgan um, beat expectations somewhat of a surprise um, this morning. Strong um, investment banking performance, rising interest payments, um, offset somewhat of bigger loan loss provisions. Um, and, you know, what's interesting, they said the prospect of monetary easing, although that's something, you know, you, know, you and I can debate, um, you know, it, it somewhat spurred a rally in equities during Q3. Um, at the same time, you have renewed economic optimism, and that prompted companies to either pursue acquisitions, issue debt and equity, um, seeing more of that activity in the secondary market, not necessarily the primary market. And, you know, it, 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 the IPO market's been relatively slow, although there's a couple of, uh, actually three larger healthcare ones taking place at NASDAQ this, uh, today, I believe. Um, so it's interesting that investment banking fees, which were up 31% at JP Morgan, um, that was a strong number considering that management's guidance was only 50% just last month. So I think if you extrapolate there, read between the lines, showing that, you know, the economy is somewhat more stable than perhaps um, was initially expected. Therefore, all of that secondary activity, especially in the M&A space, um, I, I think that is somewhat um you know, good news when you think about the trajectory of the economy, certainly in the short term. I guess the question is, did the Fed cut too much with 50 basis points in September, considering how strong the data has been, particularly employment data? There's a couple schools of thought out there where do they necessarily want to make a move the day after the election? I, I think optics may have been an issue there. Um, but I, you know, if we get we're talking kind of this, this no landing scenario and the Fed wants to be mindful of having um, some tools within their chest in case, you know, the economy does mm. uh, take a turn south. So I, I think um, while the market may expect another 25 basis points or two towards the end of the year, I, I sense that the Fed will probably take the same position that you and I, Mike, have been talking about this wait and see mode through the election because it's really hard to discern what policy um, is going to look like, right? So I, I think that's it. I think a lot of moves, regardless if it's a Fed or not, are going to be relatively muted until then. And, you know, the election isn't a magic day, if you will. You still have the transition of power. You still need to actually, you know, figure out what the substance is behind policy proposals and so forth. So it could be, you know, this same kind of environment the next four weeks, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think you're exactly right. I mean, it, it seems like everything is muted until the election. I mean, it's just, you know, we're 30 days less than 30 days out. Um, but you just bring us back to this point. I mean, we've seen a couple of uh, of the big banks settle for these money laundering cases. Anything to share on that? Or is this just another one-off with TD Bank? I thought this was, you know, for it, it, based in New Jersey, you know, seemed as if it was more of a, um, a local story versus okay. national from, from, from what I read. Um, so... Perhaps it's 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 idiosyncratic to TD, but I think the bigger story around this is is the emergence that we're seeing with AFC anti financial crime technologies and surveillance technology, something that we excel at, at Nasdaq. 
Um, but I can tell you anecdotally the pitches that I have been getting, mm. um, whether they're competitors with our offering or not, there's been a lot around um, AFC and surveillance technology. So I, I think um, you, know, you kind of read the tea leaves there. Um, you know, honestly, I, I, you know, the TD Bank I haven't spent as much time on, sure. but I think you know we're seeing this convergence of these you know technologies, whether it's used for good or bad actors. Um, that's really the, the story here, and while surveillance and AFC and compliance and so forth is. Um, really emerging. Um, granted, October Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So, you know, that's what we're covering um, for the most yeah. part. But to, it, it's not just because it's October. I think these are bigger stories that, that, that you know, not, and not even just banks or, or exchanges or market participants, but when it comes to surveillance and AFC, that's industry-wide. So... Yeah. I certainly saw an article about um, how AI will probably, you know, come to play in, um, you know, financial security. That's one of the first places that it's going to actually be more than just, you know, asking questions to chat GBT or proofreading something or creating a fancy picture. Um, yeah. AI yeah. is going to really come into the forefront with, um, you know, with, with financial security. So I totally agree with you there. Um, jumping into Hurricane Milton, um, this is the second major hurricane to create a pathway of destruction in the United States. And I mean, it seems like these storms are, you know, becoming more and more frequent and stronger. Um, you know, what are the implications uh, for the insurance industry? You know, certainly, you know, Florida, it, it, you know, it's understandable is going to become harder and harder to uh, to insure. Um, you know, we did see a couple of companies like Ger uh, Generac, with the uh, the generator company, uh, that did very, very well. Were there any other related trades that you happened to uh, come upon uh, while, the, you know, there was massive reporting on this uh, this storm? Yeah, well, I mean, Generac and um, associated um, generator companies' stocks, I mean, they, they always have those kinds of moves. I mean, we see it with, with every hurricane, every major winter storm, particularly in the Northeast. So FYI, like you you need to, you have to, I mean, you should have ordered your Generac six yeah. months ago, right? Or yeah. Cummins, I have a Cummins. Absolutely. Account. Um, you know, it, we'll start to hear those stories and you might see it every summer, whether we're looking at net gas, whether we're looking at um, generator stocks. So they, they do move um, around that. The, you know, in terms of the insurance industry, I, I've read, and I don't know the insurance space as well, but I did read a number of um, analyst reports that uh, was it Wednesday morning um, that came out from sell side analysts and how they were approaching the space. I honestly did not realize that there was insurance for insurance and they actually have caps and it, it's very complicated how it yeah. works. Right. Like reinsurance, but I don't, I, I was reading. I tell, I, to be honest with you, I've been it. in finance 26 years. I don't understand how reinsurance. Right. Works. And I, I do not envy um, financial financial um, analysts or insurance analysts. I just always remembered when, you know, when I was on the sell side, those were the guys that like, you know, spent the full week in the office during um, every quarter for earnings. It, it, it's just so complex. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think there's also derivative plays off of this. When you think about Home Depot, when you think about Lowe's, of course, you know, you don't want to capitalize on these situations, but at the end of the day, that this is what traders do. Um, you know, clearly the airlines were in play, especially the, the smaller regional ones that, where their routes were, largely focused in Florida. Um, but, you know, these storms are becoming more frequent. It, it sounds as if this one wasn't quite as bad. I mean, they were talking like Tampa was going to be moved off the map, which is a city yeah. of 3 million people. I think it was the tornadoes, which was crazy, yeah. that um, um, was responsible for the more damage, from my understanding, compared to the hurricane itself and the storm surge. Yeah, absolutely. They seemed like there was a record number of tornadoes, like, I don't know, 40-something. Yeah. Um, so here we are. We, you just are actually you already touched upon this um, that J.P. Morgan, you know, had came out with earnings and certainly Wells Fargo. Um, so, you know, we're once again into earnings season. What do you see on the radar for this earnings season as the key thing? Because, you know, in the past we've looked at, you know, um, is it going to be forward guidance? You know, what is the key statistic that we're honing in on this earnings season? Well, I mean, forward guidance is always going to, um, you know, be the biggest factor. But you have to remember too, as we're coming into Q4, companies have more visibility into what their final year numbers are going to look like relative to when we do, you know, when you start reporting in Q1, Q2, right? So it seems as if, and again, these are analysts and strategists that I've had on my show that they're expecting 
corporate earnings to, to do quite well. Um, you know, estimates have been revised. I think the big story here is that companies, you know, for the companies for the most part, you know, navigated this higher interest rate environment um, quite well, you know, especially the larger cap games that have healthier balance sheets and, and they're not as exposed to the interest rate environment when it comes to, um, you know, raising debt to, to, to finance their businesses. So I, I think with interest rates coming down or at least easing monetary policy that, that, you know, as well as they navigated a higher interest rate environment, just, you know, with some easing in there, that could be a, a tailwind for them. Again, um, I think until we get more clarity, you know, what will corporate taxes look like? What will certain policies look like that impact corporations? Um, it, it's really hard to um, plan budgets in terms of where you're going to invest your money, what your workforce is going to look like if, if you're unsure of, you know, what certain policy is going to look like because it impacts, you know, your ability to, to put money into R&D or other areas. Absolutely. And that brings me to my next point. We got this election less than 30 days away. Um, you know, as already, I think there's um, some early voting going on already. Um, you know, this may be a historic uncertainty event, right? Because we have a lot of uncertainty around this election. But it doesn't seem like the market cares that much. I mean, is it, you know, what what's your take on the market just not seeming to uh, be so interested in this? You know, I don't know if it's that the market doesn't care. And if history serves as a guide, it's not necessarily the election itself or who's in office. It's really the composure of, you know, the legislature, the people that are going to pass the laws and policy. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, you can only govern so much through executive order. So I, I don't think it's necessarily the person in office. It's really going to be policy driven and in what lawmakers look like, whether it's skewed to, you know, one side of a political party, or if, if you know, if, if it's locked, then I would imagine that the market will digest that better. Um, you know, you, you could make, you could look at, and I think there's even ETFs, like red ETF, blue ETF, I forget the exact yeah. symbol that, you know, will, will allocate based on what party gets in there. But at the end of the day, that's really not going to move the needle as much as the composure, will, uh, yeah, composition of what it looks like the lawmakers. I mean, it seems to me like, the, I mean, at least I looked at some historical data prior to coming on today, um, that it looks like the markets actually do fairly well in a locked, um, locked yep. market, meaning that the president is one party and the Congress is controlled by, you know, the other party. And it could be either like, you know, the Senate being controlled by the Democrats and the, in the, in the House Republicans and the president being a Democrat or a Republican. It really doesn't matter that the market fares well with a locked government, as long as they can kind of come to some kind of consensus that doesn't, you know, cause massive problems financially, the market seems to do okay. Yeah. So on that note, Jill, thank you so much. Uh, next time will be immediately before the election. So that'll be exciting. And uh, yes. I'll see you in two weeks. All right. Sounds good. Take care, Mike. Thanks, thank everyone. You, see ya. Bye. So here's my dash trader. Let's just take a look at a couple of charts. I'm going to first that there you go all right so we are looking at let's just see jpm right so jp morgan jp morgan had earnings today and you can see just i mean really not much of a run-up before earnings i mean yes it did go up for the last you know four to five days but on today's earnings report we have a huge um rally on jp morgan to uh 223 uh, spot 41 at the moment. Um, so JP Morgan still in an uptrend and, um, you know, really, you know, kind of leading the way on the banks um, to better than expected earnings. Um, well, let's jump. So Netflix and FLX, let's take a look at Netflix. They're usually an early um, tech company and you can see Netflix is still up, up, up and away. Um, you know, we are making a little bit of a run up to, um, to the earnings report as well. So we have already been up for a couple of days and we are at all time highs on Netflix. Um, some of the other ones that have not been faring so well is, you know, like Google, um, doesn't report quite yet, but certainly they're not near their all time high. And there is talk of the department of justice breaking up Google, which in the past historically has not been bad for the company stock, like the old breakup of AT&T. Um, let's go to Microsoft MSFT. Microsoft um, also not near its all time high, you know, kind of, you know, hanging at the bottom of the range, the range being from 440 down to 410 and Microsoft being at 415. 
Um, let's take a look at Apple, AAPL, you know, Apple, you know, really kind of, you know, kind of looking like a uh, kind of long in the tooth wedge, um, not near its all time high, but, but I mean, I'd say it's near its all time high, but not on it. Um, so definitely one to watch is Apple kind of showing a little bit of relative weakness. Um, MSFT, similar kind of story. Um, let's take a look at um, Meta. Meta at all time highs, very similar to, um, you know, Netflix. So we got uh, Netflix, we have Meta, um, you know, all time highs. We have Microsoft, Apple and Google showing a little bit more relative weakness. Now, let's take a look at Tesla because this is an interesting one. They had their cyber cab um you know cyber taxi cab event that was yesterday and then of course today we gapped down pretty substantially um so you know i would say tesla it's not i would say it's could potentially be starting a downtrend um certainly tesla um you know has some other uncertainties related to it that are kind of unique um certainly the fact that that teslas were exploding or electric cars in general, where not doing very well in the hurricane, is an interesting one to uh, to 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 be mindful of, which may have played into this kind of gap down, not just a cyber cab event. Um, let's take a look at gold because I mean, gold has really been on fire. Um, you know, gold is is you know approaching all time highs again. It's kind of looking like an uptrend. You know, you got a stair step pattern, step up, consolidation, step up, consolidation. So you know, gold is a real really bullish. Um, and whoever wins the election, it seems like they're devaluing the U.S. currency more. So SLV, also near all-time highs. So certainly the metals, um, USO, uh, also um, quite a bit off the lows. As the economy fares better, oil will fare, fare better as well. So oil prices will go up. Also oil, if U.S. dollar weakens, oil does better because it's denominated in dollars. So these are all things just for us to uh, to be mindful of. So we're pretty we're pretty much in a muted market up until the election. Um, but we we could certainly play earnings as we are going into earnings season, and that's um, you know all related to the individual company. Um, stay up to date with all things DAS uh, by signing up for our monthly newsletter. Simply fill out the form at the bottom of our webpage at www.dastrader.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Das Trader TV. For our DAS newsroom reminders and follow us on social media at uh, all of the uh, subsequent links, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all in two weeks. Trade well.